We have breaking news tonight. Law enforcement official telling the Associated Press he sent that infamous video showing Ray Rice knocking his wife unconscious inside an elevator. One well, the NFL has maintained it did not see until it was released publicly to the attention of, wait for it, the NFL's security chief. That report comes in the wake of a decision by ESPN to suspend one of its biggest stars for coming out and saying what the network's own reporting has seemed to indicate that NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has not told the truth about when he learned what that video showed. On Friday, ESPN.com posted a blockbuster story reporting that four sources indicate that Rice told Goodell early on that he had hit his wife and knocked her out. In the now famous incident in an Atlantic City casino elevator that initially netted Rice a suspension of just two games from the NFL. As ESPN's story pointed out, Goodell said that Rice initially provided an ambiguous account of what happened in the elevator. And the NFL, when it extended Rice's suspension after a public outcry, claimed that Rice's account was, quote, starkly different from what could be seen on the video. In other words, ESPN had four sources that suggested that Roger Goodell was not telling the truth. And so columnist Bill Simmons, one of the biggest names at ESPN, editor-in-chief of the network's very successful Grantland website, executive producer of its critically acclaimed 30 for 30 documentary project, basically just came out and said exactly that on his podcast. I just think not enough is being made out of the fact that they knew about the tape and they knew it was on it. Yeah. Goodell, if he didn't know what was on that tape, he's a liar. I'm just saying it. He is lying. I think that dude is lying. If you put him up on a lie detector test, that guy would fail. And, but and it, it, for he's all lying these people to pretend they didn't know is, is such f***ing bullshit. It really is. It's such f***ing bullshit. And for him to go in that press conference and yeah. pretend otherwise, I was so insulted. So that was pretty strong. And Bill Simmons seemed to know it because he then dared ESPN to come down on him. I really hope somebody calls me or emails me and says I'm in trouble for anything I say about No, Roger I don't. Goodell. I think because it's if, pretty if safe. If one person says that to me, I'm going public. You leave me alone. We the may have to believe. Commissioner's a liar, and I get to talk about that on my podcast. Please call me and say I'm in trouble. I dare you. Well, you'll never guess what happened next. Yesterday, ESPN took Bill Simmons up on that dare. Network pulled the podcast and announced it was suspending Simmons, saying, quote, every employee must be accountable to ESPN, and those engaged in our editorial operations must also operate with ESPN's journalistic standards. We've worked hard to ensure our recent NFL coverage has met that criteria. Bill Simmons did not meet those obligations in a recent podcast, and as a result, we have suspended him for three weeks. ESPN made this announcement one day after its own ombudsman had praised the journalistic muscle of Simmons and others of the network in covering the Rice story, saying that coverage was ESPN's finest hour during his tenure. Almost immediately after the suspension, Bill Simmons' defenders took to social media. The hashtag Free Simmons began trending on Twitter. We reached out to Simmons to come on the show tonight. He did not respond, and ESPN declined our invitation for someone from the network to come on to discuss the suspension. The network, it should be noted, is in the middle of a $15 billion deal with the NFL to broadcast Monday Night Football through 2021. Join me now, Mike Pesca, host of Slate's daily podcast, The Gist, and contributor to NPR and Slate's sports podcast, Hang Up and Listen. So a bunch of people were hang pointing out last night immediately the suspensions. All right. Stephen A. Smith basically said, well, after a long rambling thing, maybe she kind of deserved it in some way or she should. He got one week. Ray Rice, the person who actually punched out his wife, got two weeks right. initially. Bill Simmons for calling Roger Goodell a liar, three weeks. Mm -hmm. and, and so I would say this, the martyrdom, the paid martyrdom of Bill Simmons, maybe, may we all be punished so severely. <laughs> Bill Simmons wanted this, he got this, he, got to, he gets to mark himself as a guy in opposition to the very powerful yeah, NFL. I mean, yeah. It was still undeserved, and it still exposes ESPN as, I don't know, hypocrites, but it's clear where their interests lie, their journalistic interests and their business interests. And so this has been the question from the beginning, this whole thing is broken, is, okay, ESPN has this weird role. They're the worldwide leader that they are both the number one sports journalism outlet and also the number one yeah. sport broadcasters who partner with the leagues that they are covering all the time. And it's created tremendous conflicts. And I think everyone watching this has been watching thinking, how are they going to play this? And so far, they've done a pretty good job. 
Well, they have. I mean, they have Don Van Atta, who's a great reporter, and he does great stories on Roger Goodell, and Roger Goodell won't give him any comment, okay? They have Bill Simmons, who's paid to be a columnist, right? A columnist gives his opinion. Right. That was a strong opinion. It was not a slanderous opinion. He said, I think Roger Goodell's a liar. Yeah, he said, I think if you took him, gave him a, I think he's lying about that. Yeah, if you said that, you'd be fine, even right. though NBC right. has business interests with the NFL. Right. It really does show, like, when they canceled, they did a big investigative series where they paired with PBS, League of Denial about concussions and then ESPN pulled the plug on their involvement at and the that last is, minute more right, or less and that right. was pretty bad and that just very much shows that while we'd like to be known as good journalism 15 billion dollars is 15 billion dollars and we know what the number one two three four five seven and eight shows on TV are right and that's and that is the question right I mean you got this and there it looked like this tide was turning um, in terms of journalism in the NFL, in the in the run-up to the scandal, and this feels to me like also a marker from the yeah. It's not just Simmons. It's also like, hey, everybody, remember what will happen if you step too far out of line. Yeah, and I think that the bosses probably said, actually, what we're doing is journalistic. Actually, we want to send a message to the newsroom. But they're so touchy about Roger Goodell in a way they wouldn't be if he was criticizing some random coach or some random GM or saying that Doc Rivers deserves to get fired or Doc Rivers was a liar. Here's the, This is the best thing that I've th thought about this, and that I've heard about this and it has to do with how the press handled the financial cri crisis there are people who are reporters who report because they want access and there are people who want accountability and for the most part all the reporting that ESPN does with the NFL is about access hey I know who's gonna start I know who's right. gonna be on second on the depth chart and the accountability part it's this big with ESPN they do just enough so that we don't say oh you're totally this ignoring is a responsibility right? exactly and so you're so that you think is is that's basically what that 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 equation has maintained in this because I don't know if I would agree I I do feel like ESPN has been surprisingly aggressive about this story they after the Bashadis uh, the the head the owners the owner the Ravens, of Baltimore owner, Ravens yeah. got up and said that your story is garbage they had Don Van Etta on on yeah. their area to say no. Yeah. It's true. They had their first person on the air was Jane McManus, who's a female writer on the NFL, who's done great stuff. And you contrast it with Fox Sports 1, who's also a broadcast partner. And the guy they had on was the speech writer, who's worked with Goodell in the past, saying, great speech, Roger Goodell. So compared to Fox Sports 1, the ESPN is <laughs> right, better. Right. But it's just, it just really goes to show you that when there's so much money at stake, it's hard to be a fair and a account-driven media news right. organization. So this You're brings, a broadcast partner th first. This brings us back around, right, to the is Roger Goodell lying, which yeah. is the question. And this new AP account, you have, um, you have them, the, the source, the law enforcement source from the AP saying, I mailed it anonymously to Jeff Miller because he's their head of security. I attached a note saying, Ray Rice elevator video, you have to see, it's terrible. I yeah. provided a number for a disposable cell phone, asked for confirmation it was received. I knew there was a possibility Mr. May, may not get the video. I hoped it would land in the right hands. Again, we had one AP report. It looks like from the same source. This is even more definitive because yeah. he says this is the guy I sent it to. And, and the phrase it's terrible appears in both reports. Though it's possible that they didn't pass it to Roger Goodell to sort, as, sort of as a firewall. And I would be a little surprised if the investigation shows or proves that Roger Goodell saw it because no. why would Roger Goodell authorize an investigation that would cost him his job? That's a good point. And also why would there are certain things people at the top of organizations that make that much money want to see and don't want oh, to see. Yeah. And everyone and underneath them layers of understands whose job what the boss is. wants yeah. to I see never and not to. see. If I see this, you screwed That's up. That's exactly. Mike That's Pesca right. of The Gist, which you should be listening to every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. The police dash cam video everyone is talking about today ahead.